Hello everybody, Sherry from The Watering Mouth here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a really, really special guest today. I'm doing an interview like I used to do interviews a while back. I'm gonna to try to be doing some more interviews. So I have brought on one of my dear friends and um, YouTube subscribers, Snapchat followers, Terry McWilliams. Terry, thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Sherry. Mm -hmm. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. The way that Terry and I met actually was um, through YouTube and the watering mouth kind of audience stuff. But then I started using Snapchat pretty heavily for a while there. And um, Terry and I had some good little back and forths about various subjects. And it was always nice to get to talk to her. And, um, and I'm glad that we have this opportunity now to do this again. So thanks again, Terry. Um, so <laughs> we are interviewing Terry today because um, she is a black belt, Nutritarian. Well. <laughs> we'll we'll qualify maybe brown brown black belt right like she is in the lifestyle she's been doing it for a while we're gonna talk more about this and I <clears throat> when I did this video you guys watch one of my most recent videos I'm gonna link it um, above or below depending on where you're seeing this video um, it was a video that I did called the karate belt levels of eat to live so the karate belt levels are basically when you're following Dr. Furman's eat to live nutritarian journey after you've read the book and you've really gotten into it, there's different levels that you sort of go through um, where you're just starting out or more intermediate or you're a black belt. So black belt is where we're all aspiring to. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. So we're going to talk to Terry about her journey because I think it's really important for us to get to know other people and their specifics. Like I'm always blabbing about my journey and I think that is helpful sometimes, but I really want to have some, <laughs> okay. I really want to have some other voices on my channel as well. So I brought Terry in as my first black belt to interview here and um, here we go. Okay. So Terry, you live in St. Louis, Missouri right. and um, sort of the middle of the country, Midwest gal. So tell me about who you are in real life. What do you do? I am a mother of two. I have two wonderful children. Uh, Maggie is 24 and Matt is 27 and they're awesome. And I have to um, attribute a lot of what I know to them because they were the first ones kind of to show me how important nutrition was. You know, I had some health issues and, and they're like, you know, Matt especially, you know, moms start eating anti-inflammatory foods, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, they're they're an inspiration to me. They, they exercise regularly and have you know, made me realize how important that really is and how to eat well. Wow. And I have a wonderful husband who supports me in everything that I do, no matter how crazy it is or what he <laughs> thinks. And he's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's a talented woodworker and um, an award-winning microbrewer. So, nice, um, yeah. nice. So what's, his, what's his name? His name's Dave. Okay, awesome. Dave, Dave and Terry. Davo. Okay, cool. Davo. <laughs> so I'm a music director at my parish church. Um, been doing that for 31 years. I'm a pastoral musician, so that means I travel too. So I do funerals and weddings, and um, I direct choirs. That's my very favorite part is directing choirs. I have great people to work with, and it's just so much fun to make that beautiful sound, you know, when they work so hard. Um, so yeah, that's me. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing that, Terry. So now we have a little bit more depth on who you are. So let's get into your nutritarian journey. Can you share with us how you were originally introduced to the Eat to Live lifestyle? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm sometimes I have um, lunch breaks at home and I had the TV on and I was flipping by um, PBS. And this has happened. I don't know. I saw this guy, Joel Furman, Dr. Joel Furman. And um, every time I'd see him and he would you know, like he had this radical message about food being a healer. And I, I was a total believer in medicine and surgery and all of that. And um, I'd be like, oh, and I'd just turn him off. But yeah. the tenth time I saw him <laughs> on PBS, I couldn't, like I was eating my whatever, and I couldn't get to the clicker fast enough. And he said, you don't have to get heart disease. You don't have to get dementia. You don't have to get cancer. And I, and I, got, I put it down and I said, I'm listening. And so I watched his whole... Um, hour and a half show, whatever it was. I can't even remember which one it was. I think mm -hmm. it was uh, Eat for Health. Okay. If you did one near Eat for Health, and I was he, I was hooked. So I bought the entire PBS package, you know, and couldn't wait to. I read the book in like a day, and you know, watched all the videos, and it just made a lot of sense. And like I said, my son was encouraging me at the same time. I had some health issues, mm -hmm. 
one at that particular time, I have severe stenosis in my spine. Okay. And I have some, you know, discs that are bulging and different things. It's very painful. Mm -hmm. And for many months, I could not turn my head past here. I could not look that way. Wow. It's getting worse and worse. I went through physical therapy, did not help. I went through, um, well, I went to doctors and a couple of them said, you need surgery. Um, the chiropractor is the final one who said, I can't do any more with you. If you were my sister, I would say, go get surgery. So I went to the surgeon and he said, we're, you know, we could put a metal cage on your spine. And I thought, you know, oh. this doesn't sound good to me. No. And I had already had good results with lower back issues, just doing physical therapy and keeping that up mm -hmm. and de-stressing um, that area. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm not going to do that. That sounds terrible. So I found some stretches online that worked for me and I started doing what Matt encouraged me to do, which is start eating anti-inflammatory foods. Yeah. Got it. The um, Nutritarian lifestyle as much as I could at the time. At it the beginning. Yeah. It's hard because, in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Kale. What is that? <laughs> you know, um, but little by little, my kitchen started to transform and my pantry started to transform and mm. the refrigerator and my lifestyle pretty much. Um, and the G bombs, you know, always looking for G bombs. And I'm going to say about, maybe six to seven months in, I heard a noise at the front door and I went like this and I could turn my head. And and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, oh for the first gosh. time in many, many months. And so I thought something is working, you know, I'm gonna keep this up. Yeah. So to this day, all these, you know, this is maybe four years ago and I still am doing the stretches most days. I'll yeah. say, you know, whenever I exercise, I finish off with those stretches and I am pain free. <laughs> I I can't tell you how wonderful that feels just to have that constant pain where I, you know mm. where you move and it's gone. You know, wow, it's Terry. Just a wonderful thing. Yeah. Wow, that's oh. really really incredible. What a what a, a massive change. And actually, such a short period of time. It's, it it may seem like a long time for some people. Oh. oh, six seven months. Like that's forever to eat kale. You know. But yeah. we'll talk more about how this, the body sort of changes to actually like those foods and to be interested in them as we go. But what a huge change. And so for anyone with chronic pain or arthritis or these inflammatory issues, this type of food is so powerful. It's so, so important. And um, I'm, I'm really glad to hear about that um, change for you because often we hear people talking about, oh, I you know, my heart disease got better, you know, I didn't have another heart attack or I reversed my diabetes or whatever that was, but actually pain is such a yeah. difficult thing um, to, to yeah. reverse. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I looked, you know, I searched online, Google, is there any help, you know, for this? And I didn't see a lot of really good results. There was one testimonial on Dr. Furman's, um, on his website page. And um, she said, you know, it's not gone, but I can live better. I'm living better day to day. And that's exactly what started to happen. It took yeah. a long time, but but um, that gave me a little hope. And now I'm just like, you know, and so many other things have gotten better too. You know? Tell me, tell me like, about the other things. Tell me about the other things. I'm going to say a decade ago, I used to wake up in the morning and I'd have an ache here or a pain there, you know, pretty consistently mm -hmm. in my shoulder. You know, that would go on for months. And then in my hip, and I always had jaw issues like um, yeah. TMJ and different yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. And all of them, you know, I think, oh, this is the one that I can't fix with food, you know, or, or you know, whatever. But scratch that because I didn't know about food at the time. I, and I always thought, you know, these are kind of hopeless issues, you know, that medical, the medical field is the only way to fix these. But I watched my mom go through that. Mm -hmm. And I lost her in 1989. Mm. She went did everything the doctors told her. She took all those medicines. Um, her arthritis was horrible. She went through all the surgeries. She ended up getting cancer and that's how we lost her. And um, you know, I thought that's not a good path. Yeah. It's, it's not a good path. And I think if she had known better, things might have been different, but mm -hmm. we do know better. And that is what's so wonderful. Yeah, isn't it amazing, Terry? Because I actually just heard something about this. I was reading something and it was this idea that um, our parents' generation, this generation that's, you know, 70 years old, 80 years old, 90 years old right now, they're the ones that kind of got the raw end. And the people that are in their 50s and 60s are kind of starting to get there now. They got the raw end of the deal because they didn't have the information. All they did was receive the foods that were given to them by the processed food industry, thinking that they were 
great because they were faster. TV dinners, you know, they were faster. They were um, they were more shelf stable. They last longer in your fridge, etc. So they're thinking, oh, this is really great. Not That's realizing right. that over these years they're creating such major problems for themselves, and they have no idea. And I don't know if you and I have talked about this before, but I have a similar story with my dad. It was the same thing. By the time he passed, he was like, oh, I want to live. I re- that was that um, the day he said that was the most heart wrenching day in my life because it was about a week before he died, and he said, oh, I just want to live. And I'm like, Dad, like. I wish we could have talked about this 15 years ago. I wish, you know, I could have given him that information. And at the time, I I was only into my journey for a year or so, so I didn't know too much about it and what it maybe could have done for him 10 or 15 years ago. But that's the sad part is that we can see what it can do. It's It can be so powerful, but many people just don't get the message in time. Yeah. I yeah. just feel so fortunate to be alive right now and mm-hmm. to have Dr. Joel Furman putting out his message, you know, so adamantly and just, he keeps at yeah. it, keeps at it. And more and more people are, are getting the knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. It's just marvelous. Yes, it is wonderful. So those other, those other effects that happen as well, that's really fun to talk about too. Like, um, you know, when I started my journey, sure, there's some weight loss, right? Of course, you're going to have some great weight loss if you do the nutritarian thing. But it's also that, um, you know, you don't have to ever say again, oh, I'm just getting old, right? Like I'm having these pains because I'm just getting old, right? I know it's- Right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I hear so often, you know, I'm involved in church and there are some older people there and they're yeah. always saying, oh, it's terrible getting old. Don't get old. And I'm like, you know, it's not age. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's how you treat yourself and, know. you know, yep. lifestyle is everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me, did you have a weight loss journey? Did you lose weight on the diet? I did. Um, I was 30 something pounds heavier in high school. Okay. okay. And then uh, you know, I found some things that I could do, you know, I, the Susan powder thing, fat mm-hmm. makes you fat, you know, it's like, <laughs> what do you get? Um, and then I was down, you know, like 10 pounds from there, but I always had this like, you know, 15 pounds where, you know, I was always going back and forth, never really comfortable in my clothes, you know, and yeah. all of that. Um, but that is not an issue anymore. In fact, if I get too strict with the nutritarian lifestyle, mm-hmm. I get too thin. My BMI goes <laughs> under, you know, and I'm like, I got some leeway here, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but all my clothes fit all the time, except for the ones I didn't get rid of, you know, that are kind of bigger from before. Um, yeah. But yeah, the weight loss thing, it never enters my mind anymore. It's just not an issue. Nice. And how nice is that to not have to think about anymore yes. ever? Yes. And um, and you and I were just talking in the comment section of that, um, I think it was the Karate Belt video about this idea of that freedom, that peace that occurs when you get yes. towards that level. So let's talk a little bit about where you think you are. Are you a brown belt? Are you a black belt? Tell me about your, how would you characterize yourself? I guess I'm going to say I'm a... Um, brown belt and it depends on what day it is sometimes I'm a black belt (laughs) all day long but but there are there are times in my life as I told you my husband is an award-winning home brewer Mm. so so he makes these beers that are just incredible and then there are the holidays of course you know we have Thanksgiving that's our big holiday so what I'm choosing to do year by year is I add a nutritarian dish every year. You know, the, the Brussels sprouts are now a part of the table where they weren't before, nice. you know, and, nice. um, sweet potatoes that are roasted with just a little spritz of oil instead mm-hmm. of the big, you know, marshmallows and everything. Yep. Um, so we're adding nutritarian things to those. Um, and then I'm heavy into ancestry and we, um, my ancestors were Austrian, Hungarian. Ooh. So nice. we have, goulash and poppy seed roll and all of those wonderful dishes and um i'm the st louis research person for that here so yeah. when i have our gatherings of course i'm gonna make those dishes yeah. <laughs> the rest of the day i'm nutritarian and for you know before and after i yeah. so there are i heard once somebody say um have a splurge list so you have a splurge list and you intentionally write down all these things that you think you can't do without well guess what one by one they start going away i used to love jimmy john's you know i couldn't drive by jimmy john's without wanting that sandwich you know and yeah and it's off my list now and lots of other fast food is completely off my list but there are several other things i don't need anymore it's just from doing it over and over and over you know repeating the behaviors it it leaves yeah. so these very special times 
And on Christmas Eve, when, when it's just the four of us, mm -hmm. um, we have our cabbage rolls and our paprika gravy and all of that. But those are very special times and, and getting more rare, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. So that, Yeah, that's such a, okay, I want to revisit that concept a little bit because that splurge list idea is so cool. Um, the way you put that, I really like that because every time I talk to somebody who's not a nutritarian or someone sees what I'm eating or, you know, whatever, some social event someone says, they always say, and I'm sure you have this experience, oh, I could never do that. I could never give up this thing, or it's either, it's usually either meat or cheese. I could never give up yeah, this, geez. or I could I could never do this. And that's like when you were listening, you know, you listen to older people in your church saying things like, "Oh, I'm just getting older." You're everything in your brain just explodes, and you're like, "If I could only explain yes. to you," you know. And that's the thing too is it's so hard to get someone else to listen. First of all because they won't unless they sort of experience it and they have that aha moment themselves, like when you were watching PBS for the 10th time finally, right? Like if I had come up to you five years ago and said, oh, you have to do this, you would have been like, ah, no. Uh, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or however many years it was before you did this. But that idea of um, it just falls off the list after a while. So it's not this gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching, oh, I, I give up this thing, I can't live without this thing. It's not that. And the way that you describe this with the, the holiday things and some of the little things that you have here and there, I mean, still 10%. Like, you can have 10% of, you know, things that are not on the Eat to Live plan. So finding that That's balance. Right. It's not all or nothing. Yeah, it's not yeah. all or nothing. And even if you are brown black belt in this, it's still not all or nothing. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. You can still have, you know, a, a thing or two from time to time. Like, you know, we're talking 10%. So that's one out of 10 meals could be off, like no big deal. And it, it doesn't affect the health. Maybe it's 5%. Right. I think he talks more about 5% nowadays, but even, even still, that's still, you know, once you're on a roll, that's still a good amount of food to be able to kind of, um, you know, splurge, so to speak, or whatever right. it is. But that idea of um, it falling off the list is important because we have to know that over time, and as I was saying in the, in the beginning, the taste buds change, the appreciation comes, and you think, oh, you know, I have some people that comment on my channel that say, oh, all, what, all you eat is gerbil food, or all you eat is rabbit <laughs> food, you know? And I just wanna be like, oh, if you only knew, if you only yeah. knew. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So that's one of really... the best pieces of information I got. Um, I got to see Dr. Furman in California mm. in 2015 and last year. So oh, I've gone nice, plays, nice. Um, incredible experiences. But one uh, in one of the conversations, he was talking about IGF one levels. Yeah. And he was saying mm. that, oh, well, if you if you eat nutritarian, you know, like 90 percent of the time, 90 for 95 percent of the time. Your IGF-1 levels don't change when you decide to eat some meat. It doesn't happen the way it happens with someone who's consistently eating the meat and cheese and, you know, the dairy and all of that. Mm. So I was like, good news. <laughs> Christmas is okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it, it was by me, no means permission, I think. Of course, of course. It, it was just saying, it just wouldn't injure you in there's the a same way. There's a difference between permission of... Um, oh, I'm going to have it once a day versus I'm going to have it once a month. Those are two very different animals, you know, yes. once a year, a few times a year. Those are two different animals. So, you know, someone ha having a struggle with that. But the other side of it, if you're starting out or you're trying to get to Black Belt or wherever you are in your journey, anything you do is better than nothing. So that's even right. if you are still having meat every day or cheese every day or whatever, and you're struggling through that, that's where you are. That's your journey, and that's okay. But it's yes. better to it's better to have one nutritarian meal per day than zero meals. So or, right. or one nutritarian food, one bean, whatever you know, whatever yeah. it is that you and can get. My husband is, you know, he's the hardest nut to crack on mm. this. He, I mean, tell me about when we that. We started doing this, and I would like put that nutritarian meal on the table. I'd say, could you just put some bacon on top, just one <laughs> slice of bacon, or you know, this really could use some salt or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, even though he's been very supportive, but he's come a long way. Yeah. And I always say, whenever he eats something, you know, better, I say better is better. You know, and that's kind of our theme around here, you yeah. know? Yeah. If it, you know, if you have to have that pizza with whatever group or whatever, 
you know, eat that salad for the next meal. Better yep. is better. It's better to do something than nothing yes. for yep. sure. Absolutely. Totally agreed. So tell me a little bit more about Devo. Is he, um, is, so tell me more about your journey with him because this is what really interests me and what I really try to get into in these interviews, the struggle mm -hmm. and how you get through the struggle and how that happens. So first I want to talk about your husband and your children. Um, it sounds like your children were the ones that influenced you. So maybe that's not an issue for you with them, yeah. but with your husband, tell me more about how over the years this journey has changed with him. Okay. So um, he really was not on board. You know, he was like, you know, you're not a doctor, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, whenever you would say, you know, look what I saw online or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but now we know, you know, taking your health into your own hands, you do, doctors don't have as much information as you do sometimes. Right. Right. So it took a long time to just kind of, you know, keep at it and keep at it. And then, then he would start to think, well, maybe I don't want this, let's say knee surgery or, mm. you know, Maybe I, that's not the best route to go, you know? So I'm gonna say just by association mm -hmm. uh, of me, you know, doing this and um, that he, you know, eating what we eat on a regular basis, he dropped like 10 or 12 pounds pretty quickly. Guys, um, I mean, just, I know. Don't just men, don't men, men make me so mad. I just want to say that you guys make me so mad. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But yeah, that's that's really so wonderful. That's just by not even choosing to eat nutritarian. Mm -hmm. That's just you know whatever was there mm -hmm. and whatever else is there outside of our kitchen. You know, right, right. So, but then he started to feel better. You know, and losing weight, and his pants were getting looser, and his knees were feeling better. Wow. And so then it was kind of well, maybe I will make better choices. And so fast forward like two years. Uh, we just went out on Sunday, okay, to a restaurant, and he ordered the hummus and vegetables, not even the pita. Um, he did get the, the flatbread, but it's vegetarian, the vegetarian flatbread, which, like, is such a big transformation for him. Yeah. And, um, and then a salad that we cleaned up. We share everything all the time, so I had some of the flatbread, too. But, nice, nice. Um, so the salad, then, you just, like at restaurants, you clean it up there was gonna be croutons and um, cheese, like feta. So I said, can I have the shredded carrots instead of the feta? And can I have some avocado instead of the croutons? And they're like, yes. So anyway, so I told him, I said, I'm so proud of you. You know, he used to order his food and I would order mine and we would kind of share them um, yeah. just to, so I could get some nutrients in him and take some <laughs> bad things off of his plate. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. So sometimes he'll say to me, um, you're, you've accomplished your mission, you know, whatever. <laughs> if, if I don't tell him I'm doing these things, he knows. He knows. But he's so much better for it, and he's realizing it now so that he's making choices. Last night, um, he was at, at a club meeting, um, the beer club, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, they chose his beer to go into this um, contest for Anheuser-Busch to brew it. So, wow. Anyway, that's a great big deal. Yeah, totally. Um, but they had uh, ribs there last night. Mm -hmm. And he goes, guess how many I had? I said, how many? None. He, so wow. this is a huge transformation for, you know, the red-blooded all-American guy who's got to have meat. Yeah. So he was the poster child before. Yeah. But yeah. when he saw how good it was making him feel, you know, that's, that's what you got to experience. That is huge. Go, Davo! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have heard this from so many people, and, and my ex-husband was like this too. He's Hungarian, actually, so I know all about the Hungarian diet and pork and bacon and, you know, these heavy things, and then all these other men I hear about from women in my audience have the same kind of a struggle. The husband just won't get on board. He just won't get on board, but it's so wonderful to hear that, you know, you have this years span of, of doing this with him, but it's starting to get there. That's, wow, congratulations. That must feel so good for you. Oh, it really does. Just mm -hmm. to see him happier and healthier, you know? Yeah. 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 So tell me then about your journey and how, because it sounds like no matter what you stuck with it, maybe you had some hard times over the years, but you still kept sticking with it no matter what you'd hear from him or maybe what you'd hear from other people. So tell me about your challenges. What has been challenging for you over the years inside your own mind? What has been difficult for you and how have you overcome those challenges? 
Yeah, the hardest part is probably the planning and the, you know, doing all that shopping and doing all that prep and because you're in the kitchen a lot. Yeah. When 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 Dr. Furman says it's a lifestyle change, it is a lifestyle change and you have to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Little by little, he'd like you to go in, you know, with both feet right away. Yeah. But if you need to go little by little, that's how it happens, I think, for most of us. Mm -hmm. um, so then I got to the point where I collected so many resources and, and like it was time to decide what to have for the week. And I would get all the cookbooks out, you know, and <laughs> eat to live and the eat to live quick, you know, quick and easy and the, yeah. all the resources and then, you know, get up the menus online and, and have it all. And it's like, I need to simplify because I'm <laughs> driving myself crazy yes. trying to make, you know, just the perfect thing. And I'll tell you, a lot of uh, nutritarians that I see online, they're very good at that Sunday prep. Well, I work Sundays, <laughs> and I, yeah. I have that all day thing. And if there's any time left, I like to spend it with the family sure. um, doing other things. Mm -hmm. But um, so the prep work for me doesn't work as well. Mm -hmm. I have the 10 and 20, which I love, as mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Have the 10 and 20 version two, which I love. Yep. But buying five days worth of groceries <laughs> yeah. is a massive thing. Yeah. And I really truly have only done it like two or three times because I end up with so much like, like where are you gonna store it all in? Yeah. And then it goes bad or something comes up and you don't eat a meal, now it's, yep. uh, yeah, so that didn't work for me. So three days out is the very most. And yep. usually it's six meals out I plan for. Okay. Six this is meals. how I overcome it. So if I have six meals in the house, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, mm -hmm. I am good. Okay. Um, because my store is six minutes away. Okay. You know, um, it's further to go. It's a half hour away to get to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, okay. which you, you know are going to have more availability of sure, some of the things. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But my shop and save, which is what we have here, mm -hmm. is is fine. You know, yeah. I can get my avocados and my kale and, and all of those things there. Yeah. So it's not a big. I'd much rather go to the store and get seven or eight items than to get 50 items, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. Me. So what do you typically, okay. So you do about six meals out. I think that's a great technique. I personally do something very similar and I, I don't like the prep either. I, I did that a while back in 2016. You can see in my vlogs, I did a lot of, um, Buddha bowl type stuff. And so the prep yeah. for me wasn't that big of a deal because it was, I would take an hour on whatever day I had and just roast some of this, make some of this, you know, make some quinoa, get some lettuce chopped up or whatever it was, and I would just have some raw carrots, whatever, all chopped up and ready to go to throw on top of a salad. That was my version of prep. That's all I would do, right? But I wasn't making dressings. I wasn't, you know, doing all these other things. And then another day I might make a soup, and that would be it. I just couldn't do much more than that, and I didn't have any desire to do anything more than that. And also, yeah. many of you probably have absolutely no interest in all that prep either. So I love this technique of six meals out. What do you do for those? Um, Cause breakfast, I think breakfast is usually pretty easy. What do you usually do for breakfast? Tell me about that first. Okay, so breakfast is the simplest thing. Um, I, where we vacation, they have the same thing to eat. Like we go to the same spot every year okay. and you know what you're gonna have for breakfast, lunch and dinner at every meal every year. <laughs> I mean, this is for 30, 40 years. We've been wow, doing cool. And um, I thought, you know, they don't have to think about what they're going to eat. That's half the battle. What yeah. are you going to have? So I love the 10 and 20 so much. Day one is the blueberry apple oatmeal. Yeah. Monday, okay, I'm going to say Monday is that oatmeal. Tuesday is berry bowl. Wednesday is smoothie and almond butter Ezekiel toast. Yeah. Thursday is chia seed pudding. I don't have to think about this wow. anymore. Friday, and I send Dave to work with a day before. Um, I fix his breakfast, so he always has something good, nutritarian to eat at the office because nice. they're in donuts. Nice. Um, so I do that, and he, he knows what's coming up too. Wow. Saturday, I'll make a big fruit salad, you know, in the biggest bowl that I have. Sunday, we have like avocado toast that I'll put cucumbers and tomato and nice. uh, nooch and lemon juice, you know, and just spread that on. I'm hungry. I'm so <laughs> Wow, and, um, that makes life so easy. And I'll get there with the dinners, but that would get a little boring if you just had the same thing, you know, every yeah. week. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have like, you know, up to 30 meals, I would think, for dinner. Okay. You know, you know, between 15 and 30. Because growing up, we always had the same 15 meals yep. rotated through. Yeah, it's the same so thing. So why yeah. not mm -hmm. take the ones you love the most? If if Dave says, oh, this is tasty, or Hey, that's really good. <laughs> I write it down, <laughs> and then I'll 
I'll incorporate that into the evening meal thing. Cool. And then cool. lunch is like if we if we have leftovers, um, you know, or I have Amy's soups. I read in Eat to Live, I think it was that uh, Dr. Furman said Amy's soups have the lowest sodium. You know, yeah. go there. Yeah. So that's a great G bomb. The lentil soup, and you, yeah. I'm slicing a mushroom in there. I'm putting handfuls of greens. You know, so it's just like a sauce for my greens. Yeah. And turmeric and black pepper. You know, and make nice. it really healthful. Um, and then dinners are just like, here's the standard. If you don't know what to have, it's a big salad, a big steamed veg, and yeah. something else. The something else could be a recipe that I, that you know, Dr. Furman sends a recipe if you're a member mm -hmm. uh, almost every day. I'll try that. Or it could be a nice cream or, you know, yeah. just something else. And if you don't have something else, your salad was this big anyway. Exactly. And you have tons of veggies, so you're not really hungry for something else. But... Just to keep it interesting, I try to do that. Oh, I love that. What wonderful tips. Thank you so much. I would really love, Terry, if you don't mind, I want to do a PDF based on this particular video. If um, I'll talk with you at the end of this, and we can figure out some of your favorite recipes. I'll put some recipes okay. in a PDF. If that's okay with you, I want to share some of right. yours. And everyone, right. um, great. So uh, just as I always do, I try to create PDFs with each video I'm doing now. I don't always succeed. But I'm going to do one with this one of some of Terry's favorite recipes, her go-tos. So you can check those out. Make sure you check the links above and below for the cheat sheets. Um, and when you sign up for that list specifically, you can actually get all the old cheat sheets as well that I've put out. So that's going to be really good and helpful for you guys, I think. Thank you, Terry. Sure. Good. So, um, so you, I love this idea of doing the same exact thing every day for breakfast. I mean, we... I think most of us, I know some of us don't, but most of us have the easiest time in the morning, right? Like it's, 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 you, your willpower is really good. You're all, you know, set again for the day. And so that's nice to just kind of have to not think about that. And then another thing I like to do always is um, make sure that I'm not um, wondering what I'm going to eat for lunch. That's a huge part for me because the, the tough time for me in the day is the afternoon after lunch. So any time from before lunch to after lunch, but usually after lunch. So if I haven't, if I don't have a plan for what I'm gonna eat, it's always I'm sitting there in front of the fridge. Like, I I mean my fridge can be wall to wall stocked with everything, and I'm like I have nothing to eat. I don't want to eat any of this stuff, right? So it's always deciding in the morning what I'm gonna eat first for lunch, and then maybe for dinner too. But dinner is usually not an issue for me. So I kind of get through the day that way, and um, then that way, you know, tell myself, all right, once I'm done with lunch, dinner's gonna be at such and such time, and I'm gonna have this thing. So it's nice that you kind of have those, you know, 30 dishes that you love so much. And how did you get those dishes? Was it just kind of, it was trial and error for you and for Dave over the years, kind of seeing what you liked? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. what are- now, The 10 and 20s are the most help, I would say, because yeah. Um, you know they're nutritarian to start. You don't have to fix them, you know, yep. or adjust anything. Yeah. Um, the chilies are amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, standard would be the the Buenas Noches black bean soup or, you know, the yeah. tailgate chili. Yeah. And there's not a real good chili with the um, kidney beans in the version too. But, mm. um, yeah. And if you if you go through the G-bombs in your head, you know, some usually things will come to you. If you have mushrooms in there all the time. Yeah. You know, and some kind of bean, lentil, chickpeas, whatever. Um, yeah, just think G-bombs and then whatever's in your kitchen, you know, it starts to come together. Yeah. But recipes, really, I'm going to say that the 10 and 20s have been the most help. Yeah, I, I actually have to agree with that. I think if you guys watch my journey, you see when I did that 10 and 20, that was the start of my series of vlogs where I was doing what I eat every single day for 200 days. So you can check out those and see all the things I was eating. But it started with the 10 and 20, and that really did change my life, just like I think it did yours, Terry, where, you know, you're – you know exactly what's going in it. You know it's gonna be fine, so you don't have to worry about anything. And you learn all these new recipes. And I think that's where people get kind of like hung up on the 10 and 20 because there is so much prep. There's so much work to do it. But I actually am going through the second one right now, but I'm doing it in a very like lax way. I'm just kind of like, taking day one and going all right all I need to know today is what salad I'm gonna have because I already know what I'm gonna have for breakfast I always have the same thing myself um, and then for dinner is always just kind of all right I have a soup in the freezer or whatever it is so it's just what salad am I gonna have and I'm kind of using the 10 and 20 in that way to just find some new meals and not have to yeah. decide what to make really so that can be really helpful too I'm gonna put a link for the 10 and 20 both versions um, in this uh, down below or above so you can check those out if you're interested they're not that expensive and 
I'm telling you, they changed my life. So yeah. it's money well spent. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So I'm going to put yeah, some if you're in a weight loss, you know, then you might want to follow it day by day yeah. and do it be really strict. But yeah. The rest of the time, it's just a great resource. Yeah, and also, I think the one of the biggest things, okay, so it's 20 days, three recipes a day, that's 60 recipes. It's like boot camp. Once you get through 20 days, man, you know some recipes. All right, so next question. Um, Terry, when you go out to eat, what do you guys do? What are What's your strategies or, you know, challenges or whatever? Okay, um, going out to eat, when you sit down and you open up that menu, you're thinking G-Bonds, right? So look, look for the greens. Okay, everybody has salad on their menu. So you got salad, you think, how can I clean that up? You know, that's got, order the chicken salad, but take the chicken off, add some avocado. There's- I wanna, I wanna, I wanna interrupt yeah. you real quick, cause you wrote in your email and I really liked this. You call it cleanup salads. You call it cleanup meals, right? I think that's really yeah. smart. Um, think of that, that term that Terry uses, cleanup, when you go out to a restaurant. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, get those salads and then find like some places will have beans somewhere else in the menu or on a different salad that you're not ordering and just do swaps. I used to be so afraid to do that. I'd be like, oh, I'm such a pain. You know, they don't want to deal with me. I never have problems. If you're confident, you know, and you're not whiny, like, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> just be confident with it and say, I'd really like, can you do that? You know, and they'll be like, sure, no problem. Nice. I have no problem. So. Um, yeah, look for the G-bombs and if there's mushrooms anywhere in the menu, that means they're in the kitchen. They can they can saute those and if they come, like they misunderstood and brought them raw, say, could you just saute these a little bit? They need to be cooked. Yeah. You know, you don't want those raw mushrooms. Yeah. Um, and look, there's raw onion over here on this salad. Could you put the red onion, you know, on this? Um, so first you're looking for those G-bombs, you know. Um, then, you know, if there's hummus anywhere, a lot of, a lot of times on the appetizers, there will be hummus. Yeah. Um, Mexican restaurants now, there's one that we, we've gone to consistently and I have to clean up whatever I order in there because there's <laughs> cheese and, yeah. you know, of course there's gonna be salt and stuff in there too, mm -hmm. but you're out and there's only so much you can do. But I'll order a salad and say, can you take the chicken off and give me the fajita vegetables on top? You know, so there's broccoli and cauliflower and mushrooms and zucchini. And so they'll do that. And I'll say, can I have a side of beans with no cheese? Because I always put that cheese on top. Yep. No cheese. And then um, they bring it to the table and I'll put the beans on that salad with those roasted vegetables mm -hmm. or grilled vegetables. Uh, what more could you want? And now here's your dressing. Take the avocado mm -hmm. and the salsa, smash that together. And you are totally nutritarian, you know? So that's something that I'll do frequently. Um, and then there's better is better. If there's absolutely nothing on the menu, which is hardly ever. I mean, most people have sides, like they'll do um, asparagus on this, you know, look yep. for the sides next. Yep. After the salads, go to the sides. They'll have broccoli. Everybody's got steamed broccoli, it seems like, or asparagus or Brussels sprouts. Sometimes at a restaurant, the only thing I can get is the, the sides. So I'll get all three. <laughs> I'll get, I do the you know, same thing, yeah. No, I might be starving when I leave, but I'll, <laughs> I'll do something at home. I'll make an ice cream, okay? Yeah. But, um, but I know I've made the best choice. And every time you make the best choice, you get the best results. Yeah. Okay? So that is what you want to focus on. Yeah. Wow. I love it. Yay. That's so good. Those tips are so wonderful. Um, you know, and this is the thing too, is I think a lot of people end up getting stuck in the peer pressure feeling of it. Like, oh, I'm at a restaurant with these people. I didn't choose this restaurant, so, and I don't want to look like an outcast, so I'm just going to, you know, order whatever and just try to get back on track when I get home. But I love those ideas of, you know, first of all, looking at the G-bombs and, you know, looking at the salads and trying to clean up something else. Um, really good techniques there. What do you, what advice would you have for someone if they were worried about that peer pressure aspect of your, say you're at a table with three or four coworkers and they're all ordering whatever and they're kind of looking at you funny or you're worried that they might look at you funny. What would you say in a situation like that or how would you order, what would you do? You know, I, I kind of used to feel that way um, and then I would just go ahead and order what I thought was the best thing anyway mm -hmm. and somebody, Somebody right then would say, oh, I should have done that. It's it's not the way you think. Yeah. Um, just like when I go to 
to people's homes and, and I need to bring some, I used to be afraid to bring nutritarian food with me because I would think, oh, you're at a party, you want tasty stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I started doing it. I started bringing, I'll, I'll give you this um, eat your vegetables kind of salad with um, okay. green, fresh green beans and stuff. But I started bringing that. People are like, oh, this is really good. Or I bring the buffalo cauliflower. You know, it's yeah. the nutrient buffalo cauliflower or yeah. something like that. And people will say, oh, that's really good. Only one time said, you know, one guy said to me, um, you had me at buffalo, but lost me at cauliflower. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. the only time anybody's ever made a, a sure. comment, you know, where they didn't want to try it. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, don't sell people short. When you're doing a good, positive thing, yeah. that can be contagious and people will start to see, wow, they were brave enough or they are yeah. doing that. I could have made a better choice. Yeah. That's usually what happens. I love that. I love that. That's so true. And I've noticed that as well, um, that oftentimes, like I have so many friends that don't do Nutritarian. And over the years, so many times I've gone out with them and I'll ask and they know how I eat and that's it. Like, you know, that's just what it is. My whole website's about that. Come on. I'm not (laughs) going to choose that we're going to go and just have some meat or something. right? Right. But they always say, um, no, that's fine. I love to eat healthy when I can right? Or no, that's great. I'd love to go there. Or I'd love to make this dish or no, I'll make a nutritarian meal for this for you, Sherry, because, because I want to eat healthy sometimes too. And it actually gives them the chance. It gives them permission to choose something super helpful that they wouldn't have chosen before. And so I find that very, um, very like super, super wonderful too, because I, I can influence them in a way that's like, it's not pressure at all. And they actually get to do something that might spark in them, oh, I could do this more often, right? I could do this, uh, yeah, for myself. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I, I want to add one more thing Please. about the restaurant thing. Please. Um, it used to be like, so when I used to go out early in the nutritarian days and I'd go out and i think, oh, this is a chance to treat myself, you know? So I'd get whatever I normally would get at that restaurant. Yeah. But as I got more into, you know, making better choices, the treat became, I get to eat nutritarian and somebody else is fixing it for me. <laughs> The treat, <laughs> and and now I enjoy it so much more to mm. eat well when I'm out. Mm. Yeah. So to leave a restaurant and not feel, and I was just talking about this in my last video. I used to go out to Carabas all the time with my um, ex-husband, and it was this wonderful. We loved this. It was a. It's what made my heart happy doing this before I got there. But after I got there, I was always so mad at myself. I was too full. I hated the way I felt. And it was going to take three or four days for that salt to come out of my system and for me to feel less bloated and all. It's always the worst thing after, right? Yeah. But when you get to choose that nutritarian meal, just as you were saying, and you get to leave with a happy tummy and you know you haven't derailed yourself in any way, that feels exactly. no damage. so yeah. much better. Yeah. Right. That's, that's so good. Um, Oh, so you were telling me that you've been to one of his health getaways before. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. Oh, nice. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, that's not something I would normally do, but I, I just, this lifestyle is, I'm just so convinced, you know, and, um, so back in 2015, um, things were different. You know, my dad was living with us. He had just been diagnosed with leukemia Mm -hmm. and I, you know, he was in a nursing home and I said, you know, that's not going to do. So I brought him home with us. And, um, so it took a little more guts really to go spend the money because you know, it's expensive, Yeah. but I saved and saved because I thought what a better thing to do with my money than to educate myself on health. It just has become a priority. You know, if you're making your health your priority, then what better thing than to go and see Dr. Joel Berman for a solid week and eat nutritarian food. So my my goal was to get some ideas about food. It was still a struggle back then to get the food on the table. Mm. You know, what are we going to eat? You know, we are not familiar with these foods. We don't enjoy them. You know, that was happening. So I did enjoy that week, and I tell everybody, when you're eating buffet three times a day, you know how much food that is? We'd be like, oh my gosh, it's time to eat again. I'm still full from the last meal. So we were stuffed all week long, just these buffets and trying a little bit of everything, Mm -hmm. and I still lost five pounds that week. And I'm like, how is this possible? Yeah. You know, so that, the next one was, um, 
last year in May, and it was a culinary focus. Right. So we had three marvelous chefs, um, James Rohrbacher, Robin Jeep, and Martin Oswald, who's mm -hmm. Austrian as well, so we had <laughs> nice conversations. And I thought, how does an Austrian, you know, cook vegetarian? Yeah. So anyway, I thought, I really want, they offered a certificate in um, right. nutritarian chef. Yeah. So I had that certificate. <laughs> um, and uh, that was an amazing week because the notebook, oh, we just scribbled notes the whole week, mm -hmm. you know, and came with so many great ideas. Yeah. How um, you were asking one time how, you know, to replace salt. So mm -hmm. you learn how to replace salt, sugar, make things creamy, make things, you know, more nutritious than they would have been. Yeah. All of this, just a week of all of that. It was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I got so many great ideas from that. And I think I go back to it from time to time because you can't do it all at once. There was so much information yeah. that I try to incorporate it, you know, little by little. And it's just made an amazing difference in my cooking, you mm -hmm. know, that it's getting more tasty and, you know, just more satisfying. That's so, great. Yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. You know, I wanted to mention when you were saying that, um, it is very expensive. That's, I've never gone actually because it's too expensive for me. Uh, one day I hope to, sometime in the future, but I wanna say I have seen Dr. Furman speak um, many times, several, three, four, five times or something. He speaks all over the country at different times and different places. Like they just announced an Indiana one and I've seen him in Florida. I've seen him here in Vegas at different conferences and stuff. Look at his schedule online and see if you guys can find a place where he's gonna be speaking or get on the email list so you can hear about his speaking engagements because even just hearing him once will open up a lot of new things that you didn't think of before. Um, and sometimes they have, you know, dinners that come along with these speeches or whatever it is. And so it can be a really cool way to like, even maybe meet some people in a different area, make some new friends. I'm sure that at the Nutritarian Getaway as well, you met a bunch of people that, you know, it's yeah. really fun. My yeah. roommate that I had the first year, we are friends for life. Nice. And yeah, it was just so amazing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. We so make great friendships. So get into the community that way, um, and and uh, try to see if you can see Dr. Furman live because he's doing stuff all over the country all the time, and it's really something. Thank you. So the last question I want to ask is, um, what's your advice for people that want to get started with this lifestyle? It's very overwhelming. So what's your best advice for people starting yeah. out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so first of all, um, I would say your priority. If your priority is your health. You know, you have to have some a motivation because this is not a real easy thing to do, yeah. obviously. But um, so when your priorities change to putting your health first or to, to solving a health issue that you have specifically, mm -hmm. um, think on that, you know, every day, every morning, make those better choices. And as you make those better choices, just one by one, you will start to feel better emotionally, mm. um, physically, um, psychologically, because knowing you're making this better choice, how can how can you you know feel any better than knowing you're doing something good? Mm -hmm. So I would say, and like I said, Dr. Furman wants you really. He thinks it's best, and a lot of people say if you've got one foot on on each side of the fence, it's very hard uh, to do that. So some people need to go 100 percent and yeah. never look back. Yeah. But, um, but if you do look back, don't give up. What you just did has nothing to do with the next meal. You have mm. the knowledge. And that's the, the second thing I would say, acquire the knowledge. Um, I have my Nutritarian uh, Studies Certificate and, mm. and by golly, that, that was a nine month program. You're studying textbooks with jargon and scientific terms that you think you'll never understand. Right. But if you're interested and motivated, you can understand it. And then you go through the whole course about nutritarianism. Yes. And boy, you learn so much. So the education, um, just keep educating yourself. Once you have the knowledge, you can't look back. You're not going to unknow that. And, yeah. and the science isn't going to change so much that that the G-bombs are going to be unhealthy for you one day. <laughs> right. It's not going to happen. So once you have the knowledge, you are nutritarian. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. It, to a certain extent. And so, and I think the other thing, if I would say I'm a black belt or I'm a nutritarian, I don't, I don't say that. I would say I'm a person who chooses to eat nutritarian yeah. because that's more approachable. If you say I'm a nutritarian, that's not approachable for people. They don't I like know anything that. about it. You know, so just say I choose to eat well. 
mm. you know, or put it in some terms that people can understand. Yeah. And, um, and think about it that way. Simplify it. Think of the nutritarian lifestyle as um, a diet of abundance, mm. a diet of, you know, tastiness, a diet yeah. of nutrients. You know, think of all the good things um, that there are about it. And that positive reinforcement will get you through a lot. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Those were some wonderful. I'm gonna. I was gonna say G bombs, but I mean truth bombs is what I was really looking for. <laughs> that stuff is so good. Um, all of those things that you said right at the end. Rewatch that part, guys, because I want to make a comment about the nutritarian certificate you got. That's something that's offered on um, Dr. Furman's website. You can do this nine month program. It does. It has textbooks. It's you know you're in school basically. You can get a certification. Um, the same as the culinary get getaways, um, the getaways in general, great things to do. Very expensive though. So um, I imagine that these are things that you know you saved up for, you considered for a long time, you you know, yeah. oh, so much money. But you can get there. You can get there in your journey. But start small. Start with little videos. Start with um, you know, Dr. Furman has so many articles and so many recipes and. My technique is always one recipe a week. Just try one new recipe yeah. a week minimum That's if you can. Great, yeah. yeah, just just yeah. little things here and there. And you can work up to those other things that Terry's mentioning. There's so much. you. I mean, you can give yourself a certificate with all the free content that's online. The other side of it I think is really important is to um, look into like Facebook groups and the different places where you can get support too. So if you're just starting out, all of the things that Terry said are so important that I think the education is probably one of the most important and you'll hear Dr. Furman say it ad nauseum as well. The education is the most important part. You have to get that reasoning in your mind when you're going to make these choices. Um, but also having support from other people who are doing it as well, I think is very important. And Tara, you've done a great job. You know, you always watch my videos, you're always reading things and learning things. And I think that's really, and that's my strategy as well. I've always got an audio book going on at some place during the day so I can keep that information flowing. Yeah. And so if you haven't been through all of Sherry's videos, you must. <laughs> Sherry has been such an inspiration to me personally for these last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I watched when, when you did the 10 and 20, you know, <laughs> daily, you know, and yeah. you vlogged, all, vlogged your, your cooking and, and eating and what you thought of it and all of that. You know, I was like, I couldn't wait to get to the next one, you know, and I put <laughs> some of them with you on that day, you know, so we, you know, unbeknownst to you, we would share, you know, opinions. Yeah. But we had the same thing happen on the, that kale soup, the um, cheesy kale soup. I thought, I wonder what my sisters would think if I gave them this soup. And you had the same thought about somebody <laughs> that you were, and um, anyway. Yeah, totally. But, uh, Sherry is an inspiration. She's one of the, the few Nutritarians out there. There are some, you know, and they're getting more, but but Sherry's so real, um, very personable. And don't you dare edit this out because <laughs> I'm speaking from my heart. Um, you've encouraged me through all of this, knowing somebody else was there, having the same feelings, you know, having cheat days or whatever, you know, not doing so well and saying how that feels. Um, it's a real inspiration. So use it. It's a resource to all of you that, that really want to start this lifestyle and get healthier and feel better. Mm. You're wonderful. No, oh, <laughs> thank you, Terry. And the same right back to you. You've been such um, such a great support for me, always commenting and, and giving me some really good encouragement. It's, um, it's people like you that I do this for, and it's people like you that have kept me going. So thank you so much for everything over the years. And I, I look forward to our friendship just blossoming and growing and, and for us getting healthier and healthier and healthier and helping other people get healthy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Terry. I think this has been just um, a crazy amount of awesome information. I so appreciate you doing this interview with me. So remember, we're going to be giving um, some of Terry's favorite recipes in a PDF, so look for, out for that. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you, Sherry. Of course. Okay, so guys, as always, um, if you like this video, you can tell me by hitting the like button, and that way I'll know you're interested in more interviews like this. Also, you can comment down below, let me know what you thought. What was the thing in this interview that hit you the most, that really stuck with you the most? Because I know there was about 10 things for me, and that is no lie. Um, I thought this was really, really helpful. So also, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you'll get notifications for all the videos coming up in the future. And um, lastly, 
Uh, this is a small business I run. This is actually a small business. I'm a coach uh, and I'm also doing all of these YouTube videos for free for you. So if you uh, can find it in your um, heart or your thoughts or your wallet to possibly uh, donate just a little bit here and there would be so helpful. And you can do that on my Patreon channel. Um, Patreon is a website where you actually get some extra content that I don't put anywhere else. So if you um, are interested, please check out Patreon and put a link for that down below. All the links for everything we're talking about down below so you can check all that out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Terry. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>